let's talk about X, baby. When you entangle with our kind in a romantic dynamic, it is very indeed if you do not find yourself hearing about our ex. Whether it is the ex-wife, the ex-boyfriend or the ex-partner, the subject of the ex is one which will appear with considerable frequency. Indeed, you may not even meet this person. But you will feel that you know them almost as well as you know yourself, the amount of time we spend talking about them to you. At the outset of your ensnarement, it is highly likely that we were already in a romantic relationship with somebody else. You may not initially be told about them. We may reference them because we utilise their existence as a magnifying factor to increase our opportunity to draw fuel from you and to bind you to us. It might be that their existence is referred to once you are ensnared, when we instinctively realise that you will not back away. Or we may refer to them almost as an afterthought when we have disengaged from them and made you the intimate partner primary source. Whether we tell you the truth that we are married or we keep the existence of a significant other until afterwards and then we fudge precisely when we broke up with them, it is not a matter we consider as especially relevant. What matters to us is that we will keep telling you about them. During your golden period, be it when we have targeted and seduced you, or when we have embedded you, the X will be painted well and truly black. We will tell you how this person is a truly terrible person. The immediate X, or he or she who is about to become the X, is the person spoken about the most. But other Xs may well make an appearance too, especially if we want to portray ourselves as some kind of superhero for enduring them, or that we are some poor done to martyr. The X or X's will attract one or more of the following labels. 1. Crazy Bitch She is wild, unpredictable and clearly cuckoo for Cocoa Pops. We tried to help to be understanding and make them see that there was something wrong with them. But despite our best endeavours, she just could not see it. She had no insight, you see, and whatever we did was thrown back in our loving faces. 2. Controlling Ogre he never let us do anything, always checking where we were, who we were with, what we had been doing. We felt like a tracking device had been placed on us, and everything we wanted to do was a battle beforehand. 3. Addict. Whether it was drink, benzos, weed, expensive, g gambling, junk food, it did not matter. This person had a terrible addiction, which of course we tried to help them with. But they would not be helped. Jealous lunatic. He was always accusing us of having affairs, seeing other men, flirting and being obsessed with the attention of others. Five, a narcissist. The ex was definitely one of these. We may well have read about it and it sounds good, or... More often, the ex actually called us one, so we threw it back in their face with some rejection. And this meant he or she was an awful person to us. Oh, the stories we could tell you about this terrible condition, and indeed we will. Six, violent abuser. He or she would attack me. I had to call the police so many times to deal with them. A passerby once had to rescue me after he started to punch me in the street. I'm a big fellow, so I can handle myself, but it was still unpleasant to have someone you love kick you in the balls. 7. Obsessed. She just would not give me any space to myself, and even now, even though I have told her that it is over, she will not leave me alone. I don't mean to frighten you, but she's probably stalking me at the moment. She just cannot seem to accept that it is at an end. 8. Criminal. He is up to all manner of criminal enterprises, stealing cars, selling drugs, burglary. It was just too much. I don't know why he did all of this when I was earning enough money for the two of us, but he just kept going, and in the end it was too much when he tried to get me involved. 9. Adam's family. She was just odd. Her family had to be with us all the time. We moved in with them to save rent, but then when we finally got somewhere of our own, every time I got in from work, some member of her extended family would be there, and it was like there was always at least three of us in the relationship, and, well, I'm sure they were just a bit too loving and close, if you know what I mean. 
There are plenty more labels which I'm sure you can add. The fact is, however, that you will find we will talk about this person with daily regularity, treating you to the latest anecdote about this person's aberrations and anomalous behaviours. You receive a forensic examination of what this person said and did as we recall it in all in such detail that you can readily see it all in your mind. This harping on about the X, of course, is done for several purposes. One, drawing sympathy from you over how we have been treated. Two, appealing to your empathic traits to soothe us, help us and love us after this awful experience. Three, appealing to your desire to outdo your previous competitor by showing you are a far better partner than that person, and that in turn we gain more benefits from your increased desire. Four, making us look like a good person to have tried to help the ex. Five, making us look like a decent person to have persevered. Six, to cause you to dislike the ex, so that you will respond in a hostile manner, should your paths cross with them. Seven, to ensure the ex has no credibility if they attempt to go down the route of trying to warn you about us. Eight, to create a ready excuse for any poor behaviour we might exhibit should the mask slip. I'm sorry, it is clear I am traumatised after how Kate treated me. Nine, to draw fuel from you in terms of your sympathy, your anger, your hatred of what the person has apparently done to us. Ten, to support the smearing which we which we will have done as we prepared to disengage from that previous IPPS. At first, you will be pleased to hear about these daily bulletins, these briefings against your former competitor, as this will serve to quash any fears you may have that we might go back to them, or that we might succumb to an approach by that person to win us back. The more you hear us pour scorn on them, the happier you feel, and the more secure you become. We will talk about them as we secure your allegiance to us, always reminding you of this spectre that promises to be the ghost at the feast. Once you have been embedded, then, often we will then cease to talk about them because we have effectively deleted them from our minds as a consequence of the embedded golden period we are now enjoying with you. However, if there is reason for them to keep appearing in our sphere of influence, for instance, the ex keeps contacting us to understand why we disengage from them, or to sort out the return of property, or to attend to child contact arrangements, or to address matters appertaining to a divorce, then we will keep mentioning them. We will have no interest in engaging with this individual because we want to consign them to history. But if they keep appearing, then we will keep mentioning them for the purpose of drawing further fuel from you, by referring them to the she-devil or the ogre. Accordingly, the daily bulletins, smears, insults and so forth about the X will follow this pattern. 1. Extensive mention as we start our seduction with you as the soon to be X enters the final stages of devaluation. 2. Continued mention once you are embedded, if the X appears in our sphere of influence. 3. Mention then effectively halts once the X stays out of our way and the embedded golden period commences. Reaching point three, however, means you will have experienced plenty of discussion and observation about the X, as everything has been picked over in minute details. If there was a word cloud for this period of time between you and us, you and the X would rival one another for primacy. Yet this frequent mention of the X is not yet over. Once your devaluation as IPPS begins, then the X or other Xs will start to be mentioned or mentioned again. But of course, all the slurs, smears and illsons will be wiped away at this point, because now the X or X's will be seen in a white light, compared to your position in a black light. Accordingly, you will be compared and contrasted to this X on a daily basis, and in the following ways, as they are referred to in some or more of the following. 1. The only one. She was the only one who truly understood us and how we want her back. 2. The super sex god. He was dynamite between the sheets, and you long for that excitement once again, compared to the damp squib we are now with. Three, mum of the year. She is so good with the children, far better than you as wicked stepmother. Of course, the children may well back this up, either because they truly think it's hardly a revelation, revelation or they have been manipulated to think this way by us. Four, domestic goddess. 
She had this place shining and tidy, great dinners on the table, and she always looks great. Look at you, you're a mess, you can't cook. This house is a tip. What have I done by choosing you? Five, Cash King. Boy, he worked hard, brought in good money, and looked after me. What do you do? Nothing. Or you have a poorly paid job compared to him. Six, the saint. She would never have treated me like this. You conned me into going with you and luring me away from such a wonderful woman. I hate you for it. Seven, clean living. He looks after his body, eats properly, doesn't drink much, and look at the way you go on eating junk and smoking. You actually ate one burger in the last six months and smoked maybe two cigarettes a day. But it doesn't matter, does it? Because split thinking has manifested once again. Again, there will be many more labels for the person who was once the devil incarnate, but is now back on the pedestal. To compound matters, when you try to point out how we label them and refer to all of our, all of the ex's awful behaviours, we will accuse you of making things up, being jealous, projecting your own behaviours and so forth, which will leave you hurt and utterly bewildered as to what on earth is going on. We will talk about going back to the ex, which will leave you dumbfounded when you point out that this person has done awful things, according to us. We will deny they have, euphemise their impact, or refer to the fact that the ex has changed. Of course, this then alerts you to the fact that we have been engaging with them behind your back, which is often the case as we hoover them. If the ex is responding to our hoovers and is being seduced once again, then of course you know what is happening to you when we speak with them, don't you? Yes, that's right. We are giving you the labels we once gave to them. As we talk about how we have been conned, how we were misled, how the new IPBS actually told us lies about you, and we were taken in by them. Never our fault. Always somebody else's fault. Triangulation is a major part of the narcissistic dynamic. It allows for two strong fuel lines. It causes parties to fight over us. It makes them work harder to keep us or draw us away when they perceive that there is a threat. It is an excellent manipulation which delivers time and time again. Accordingly, we love to be able to talk X, baby.